Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another Vector Made tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about the Elder Scrolls series. Um, the Elder Scrolls 6 teaser trailer came out yesterday and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to show everybody how to do the text in that uh, teaser trailer? And so let's just jump on in. So as you can see, this is kind of the finished product of what I'm doing. And it's not the exact same look as what was in the uh, teaser trailer. You'll notice that the font is slightly different. There's some separation here. and. The S is a little different and uh, the I doesn't have this little extra bit here, but I'm just using a free font that you can get from defont.com. And I believe this was used in some of the previous Elder Scrolls series. So anyway, this is just to kind of give you a basic look that is similar to what was in the Elder Scrolls series. So let's uh, pick this apart and really um, see what it looks like in depth, okay? So one of the first things you'll want to do is to create a new um, artboard. I just made mine 1500 pixels wide by 350 pixels high. Uh, you know, make it something that works for you, whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be that big, but just something like that works great. Um, what I would do is uh, go ahead and, and fill this in with like black, probably. Let's do the paint bucket and just make that a black background. Okay, cool. And then um, come in with your text and start typing in the Elder Scrolls VI. I need to make that plain walker font, which it is. And let's do white for now for the color. And then let's center it. So, oh, Edler. I don't want Edler. Edler's not good. And then I'll shrink it down a little bit. Let's see. I don't know about out there is good probably and then I'll just center it in the middle here so there you've got your text and we can start adding some effects to this all right so the first thing we're gonna do after we've typed out our text over here is gonna add some effects to this text layer so come over here and make sure that your text layer is selected and grab the effects here and let's just come into bevel and emboss first okay we want an inner bevel we want to go chisel hard and depth at 100 is fine up is good and 32 is good um, zero on softening i think is fine and then this we might change to uh let's do 40 and 20. i like that make sure anti-alias is, is checked i think this is the standard uh, gloss contour and i think that's fine you could mess around with a couple of these others um, to give you some different looks that's pretty cool and it might be cool possibly but i found that this got the best shading out of everything in there just you know without without messing with it too hard um you want to have white with color dodge on so 100 i did 100 percent opacity and then i multiply with and get this color um, i felt this was a nice little bronzy dark tone that worked really well and then so hit okay i also added contour and I didn't change anything else, just this, the first option here, anti-alias 100%, nothing fancy in that whatsoever. But just clicking that adds a little bit of change down here, and you can notice it. It's subtle, but I like it, and a lot of times I'll have that checked. So um, The other thing we want to do is do a color overlay, and this is the color I'm using right here. Here are my values. Again, gives you just sort of a bronze um, I'm going for like the medium bronze tone here, and then I'm allowing for the bevel to give me the highlight and the shadow. Um, so that's kind of where you get this bronze from really dark bronzy to almost white, but just a little bit of bronze color in the, in the highlights. And so that's what we do for the bevel effects on the text. The next thing we're going to want to do is add some texture to this uh, font. And so I just grabbed an image. I'm going file, place linked. Um, I'll just come up here to my quick, and there it is. This is something I grabbed off a of Google search. I just put in bronze texture, and I'm going to hit OK. And then over here, um, you want to have it selected, but you want to control click on the font layer that you made, and that will load it up as a selection. You'll see these marching ants around your font. If I get rid of this, you can see maybe a little easier. Um, and then you'll come down here while this is selected to uh, create your mask. And that will mask that layer to the font that you just selected. So 
Um, we don't want it to show up in the background. We just want it to show up where the font is. So that's what you do that for. Um, then click on this, double click on the layer and it will bring up your layer style. And let's go with a soft light. That's probably gonna look really good. And then um, for now, let's leave that where it is. But as you can immediately see, it allows the, the layer underneath it to show through. So you're getting some of these speckles in here. And I'll zoom in just a little bit. It's gonna pixelate at this size, but you can see some of the texture that gets in there that uh, we want to have in this picture. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is that it changes the color. See, this is a little more muted, more like the original um, from the trailer. And then this is a little bit mm, shinier, more yellowy. So what I would do is um, go ahead and right click on that layer and hit rasterize layer because we don't want it to be a smart object. And then come up to image adjustments, desaturate to take out the color. Now it's just going to be a gray tone image um, that's applying texture. I find that that's very helpful when you just want to apply the texture, but you don't want the color. If you desaturate something, you can easily keep the color of whatever's underneath it um, much more easily. It's just a quick, quick tool that I use to get around that. Um, the other thing I would do is probably come in here and do a new adjustment layer. And let's do a levels. And let me pull that over here. Say okay. You want to right click on that layer uh, that you just created and say create clipping mask so that it just applies to the bronze texture. We don't want it to apply to anything else. And then you get these little sliders in the properties menu here. You'll get the, these are the dark, um, darkest tones, medium tones, and light tones. And if you pull this up, basically you're saying, you know, bring up the dark to just meet here and it, you'll see what it does it enriches the darks of your of your tone but it's like kind of losing information at the same time um and then this will do the same thing on the re in the opposite it'll increase lighter lights and, and and kind of bring the contrast in a little bit um usually you want to do that just a tad on these kind of i mean can you can kind of see the the most of the tones are going to be mid-tones here anyway. This, this is sort of a graph of what is in your picture. But um, I definitely want to bring up the dark tones so that I get a little bit more grain in the dark. And then maybe with this slider, you know, you could adjust the mid-tones a little bit. Maybe, maybe we go about there. I think that looks pretty cool. And... I'm good with that. I like that. Now, if you want to come down here, you can actually you know, change how much dark or lighter in the picture as a total. And, and usually I don't end up using these sliders as much, but because um, I find these are a little bit, I can get what I need out of these sliders up here um, without ever having to mess with the output levels. So I like the way that looks. That looks cool. Um, let's go with that for now. Something else you might consider is double clicking on the bronze texture that you created and come down to these sliders. This is a blend if slider. It's under blending options. And just have that on gray. And you might check what, you know, what this looks like if you drag these sliders. Now, if you just click and drag, you're gonna get the whole slider. But if you're holding Alt and you click on just one of them, you'll get a half slider. So what's cool about that is you kind of get a, if you're sliding this up with both sliders, both halves of this slider, you're going to just say, you know, we don't want certain amounts of the, the low end in this layer or in the underlying layer, right? But if you do the Alt and then click and drag, you're giving it a range so that it, it kind of gradually softens from the darkest to, you know, wherever you are here. Um, and I tend to, I like that. That usually looks better because I don't want to like completely get rid of the dark tones i want to just have them soften up a bit so maybe i come out to here and maybe i do the same thing with the lights maybe you come in just a little bit and do that um or you you come to your underlying layer and do the same thing i'm holding alt while i click this and just see what difference that makes and i don't know if you guys can see it on your screen but on my screen you know this just softens up that texture a little bit um, because sometimes these textures can be just a little overwhelming so let's go with that i'm just going to randomly select that you know just eyeballing it and see what it looks like i think that looks cool because i've got a little bit of texture here but it's not overwhelming it's not just in your face um nasty looking so 
Anyway, that's my tutorial on how to kind of get an Elder Scrolls series look on your font. Um, leave any comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of this. Obviously, it's not the exact same as what's in the tra the teaser trailer, but this is you know kind of a quick way of doing something that looks very similar. And uh, like and subscribe and share, guys. I'll see you in the next video.